lesson, we're going to be walking through the process of building in this lesson, we're going to be walking through the process of building a Prometheus server. So there are several different installation options you can use in order to install and configure Prometheus. One way to do it is to use the pre-compiled binaries that can be downloaded from Prometheus.io, and that is the method that we're going to be using in this lesson. You can also build Prometheus from the source code, which can be found on GitHub, or you can run Prometheus in a container with Docker using pre-built Docker images. So we are going to be setting up Prometheus using those pre-compiled binaries on a Linux server. And if you want to follow along, you can use a Cloud Playground server in order to do so. So if you want to set up a server in Cloud Playground, create a server with the following settings. You want to use the Ubuntu 18.04 Bionic Beaver LTS distribution. You want to use a size of small, and the tag doesn't really matter, but I tagged mine as Prometheus just so that I know that server is the Prometheus server. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm logged into my playground server here that is going to become my Prometheus server. The first step is to go ahead and create a user and a group that is going to be used by the Prometheus application. So I'm going to use the user add command to go ahead and create a user and group called Prometheus. Now that I've created the group, I'm going to use mkdir to create some directories. We're going to create slash etsy slash Prometheus in order to store a variety of configuration and other files that Prometheus needs and slash var slash lib slash Prometheus to store the actual Prometheus data. Next, I'm going to go ahead and download the Prometheus archive, which you can find on Prometheus.io. So I've just downloaded the latest version of the Prometheus archive for Linux. And then I'm going to do tar xzf to go ahead and extract that archive. So what I've done here is I've just extracted the archive right here to my home directory into this directory called Prometheus- 2.16.0.linux.amd64. So all the files are right there in the home directory. So in order to set this up properly, we need to move those files to the appropriate location. So I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen just so that we can see a little more easily what's going on here. And I'm going to copy two binary files that are from that archive that I just extracted. So I'm copying Prometheus and Prom tool, which is a command line tool for Prometheus. These two binaries I'm going to copy to slash user slash local slash bin. And I also need to make sure that I set ownership on those two binaries. So I'm going to make them owned by that Prometheus user and group that I created earlier. Next, I'm going to copy the consoles and console libraries, directories, and files to slash etsy slash prometheus and then i'm going to copy prometheus.yaml so prometheus.yaml is our main config file we're going to talk in more detail about that file later in the course but for right now we're just going to use the default config file that came with that downloaded archive and we're going to place that in slash etsy slash prometheus now that we have copied all those files and directories let's make sure that we set our ownership so I'm going to recursively set ownership on slash Etsy slash Prometheus to that Prometheus user and group. And I need to do the same to that var lib Prometheus directory. Now there's nothing in there right now, so I don't need to set ownership recursively. We're just setting ownership for that specific directory itself. So now that we have everything set up there, let's go ahead and just briefly test it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to run Prometheus in the foreground and I can just enter Prometheus right here on the command line to do that because we moved that binary to slash user slash local slash bin. So I'm just going to run it right here in the foreground and I'm going to pass in this flag config.file and provide the location of that Prometheus.yaml and this is just to test and make sure that everything is working and sure enough in the output here at the bottom, I can see server is ready to receive web requests. So everything looks good so far. I'm just going to control C to stop that 
Prometheus instance that's running in the foreground. Now, of course, we don't want to always have to run Prometheus in the foreground. It makes sense to turn it into a systemd service. So let's go ahead and create a systemd unit file for Prometheus. I'm going to do a sudo vi, and I'm going to edit this file called etsy systemd system slash prometheus.service. That's going to be our systemd unit file. And I'm just going to paste in the contents of that file. You can find these contents in the description down below the video if you want to just copy and paste the same unit file that I used. But the important part here is really that exec start directive. And you can see that we're calling user local bin Prometheus with a series of arguments. We're specifying the location of our config file. We are specifying the path for our Prometheus storage, which is going to be var lib Prometheus, as well as the location of our console templates and libraries. So I'm going to go ahead and save and exit that file. And now I'm ready to go ahead and start up my service. So I'm going to do a sudo systemctl daemon reload. Now you don't actually have to do this the first time you create that unit file, but if you made a mistake or you go through a process of editing that file multiple times, you may need to go ahead and do that daemon reload if the file has already been loaded by systemd. So I'm going to go ahead and just do it now. So now I'm ready to start my Prometheus service. So I'm just going to do a sudo systemctl start Prometheus. And I'm going to enable that service as well so that it will start up automatically whenever this server starts. So I've started and enabled the service. Let's make sure that it's actually working. I'll do a sudo systemctl status Prometheus. And I can see that it is in the active running state. So I'm just going to control C that. And there's a couple other tests I can do. I can curl localhost colon 9090 just to make sure that I get a response. Sure enough, I did get a response and that response came from my Prometheus server. And there's one last thing we can check and that is to attempt to access our Prometheus server in a browser. So I'm just going to come over here to a browser on my local machine and I'm going to paste in the public IP address of my server. If you're doing this, make sure that you use the public IP and not the private IP. Then I'm going to put colon 9090. And sure enough, I can see a page here that is being served by my Prometheus server. We are going to be talking about configuring Prometheus. So we're going to actually get hands on with Prometheus configuration by making a basic configuration change to our Prometheus server in Cloud Playground. But first, I just want to briefly talk about the basics of what you need to know when it comes to Prometheus configuration. The central component that you need to be aware of when it comes to configuring Prometheus is the Prometheus configuration file. You may remember that when we set up our Prometheus systemd service, we passed in the dash dash config dot file flag and that flag allows you to specify the location of that Prometheus configuration file. So we set up our systemd service to use the configuration file located at slash Etsy slash Prometheus slash Prometheus.yaml. So all of our configuration changes that we need to make to our Prometheus server, we can do simply by editing that Prometheus.yaml file. This configuration file does use the YAML format. We're not going to go in depth on YAML formatting, but we are going to look at the configuration file and just get a basic idea of what that format looks like. There are far too many configuration options in Prometheus for us to go over each and every one. So in this lesson, we are just going to focus on the basics of how we actually make changes to that Prometheus configuration. If you want more information on any individual configuration option or just want to know what options are available, check out that documentation. There's actually a link to the specific area of the documentation that covers those configuration options in the description below this video. So we make configuration changes by editing our Prometheus.yaml, but there's one other thing you need to be aware of, and that is the concept of reloading the configuration. Whenever we make a configuration change, we need Prometheus to reread that configuration file in order for the configuration change to take effect. There's a couple different ways we can do this. A very simple and easy way to go about it is simply to restart Prometheus. When Prometheus starts up, 
it'll reread that configuration file and load the new configuration. However, you can reload the Prometheus configuration without restarting Prometheus. And the way you do that is simply to send a SIGHUP signal to the Prometheus process. There's a lot of different ways you could go about that, but I have an example command right there on the screen. We could use the kill all command with dash hup to send that SIGHUP signal to the Prometheus process. So that's just a basic idea of what we're going to be doing. Let's go ahead and get started. So I'm logged in here to my Prometheus server, and this is the same server that I set up in the previous lesson. What we're going to do is make a basic configuration change to this Prometheus server. So I'm going to do that simply by editing that Prometheus.yaml. So I'll do sudo vi, and if you remember, our Prometheus.yaml is in etsy slash Prometheus slash Prometheus.yaml. And here is that YAML file. It is formatted in a very specific way. Of course, everything after a hashtag is simply a comment, so it doesn't actually affect the configuration. But the main thing you need to know about YAML is that white space is very important in YAML. If these different lines are not indented properly, Prometheus won't be able to read this file, and it won't even be able to start up because it won't be able to read the configuration file. So let's go ahead and just make a very simple configuration change. I'm just going to change the first value that's part of the default configuration up here at the top. We see global, and under global we have scrape interval. And this value is the default time period that determines how often Prometheus is going to access the different exporters and read metrics from those exporters. So if we don't set a specific scrape interval configuration for one of our exporters, this default of 15 seconds will apply. So I'm just going to make a very simple change here. I'm just going to change that 15 to a 10. So now Prometheus by default is going to scrape metrics from our exporters every 10 seconds instead of every 15 seconds. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and just save and exit this file. Now I have saved the file, but at this point, Prometheus is still going to use 15 seconds for that value. So we need to reload the configuration. And one way to do that, of course, would be to restart Prometheus. I could do that like this with sudo systemctl restart Prometheus, but I'm not going to do it that way. That way will work just fine, but I want to show you how to do it without restarting Prometheus. So I'm going to use that method of sending the sig hub signal to the Prometheus process. So I'm going to use the kill all command. Now normally we would use this command to kill a process, but kill all has the ability to send a custom stop signal to the process, and we're going to send the hup signal. So I'll do kill all dash hup, and Prometheus, when it sees that sig hup signal, it's not going to stop, it's just going to reload its configuration. And of course I need to enter the process name there. So it looks like that command completed successfully and I was able to make my configuration change. But when I'm learning how to do something like this, I like to actually see it take effect. So let's just take a moment to verify that we can see our configuration change represented in Prometheus. And an easy way to do that is to access the Prometheus API. Now we're not going to talk in depth about the Prometheus API until later in this course, for right now, we're just going to use it very briefly to see if we can see that new configuration change that we made. So to use the Prometheus API here, I'm just making a request to localhost 9090, and I'm requesting the endpoint slash API slash v1 slash status slash config, and that is going to retrieve our Prometheus configuration. And here we can see this YAML value inside of some JSON, but this is actually the YAML that Prometheus is using for its configuration, and I can see my global scrape interval is set to 10 seconds. So before it was 15, we changed it to 10, and we are seeing that represented here in the config that is currently loaded into Prometheus. So it looks like I was able to successfully make that configuration change and get the Prometheus server to load that changed configuration without even having to restart Prometheus. So those are just the basics of managing Prometheus configuration. 
in order to change our Prometheus configuration, we just have to change that Prometheus.yaml file and then ensure that Prometheus reloads the configuration either by restarting Prometheus or by sending that SIGHUP signal to the Prometheus process. 